Welcome to the channel. Thank you everyone for tuning in. Join me on today's video where I'll be giving you guys the full review on the San Martin SN007GB. And this is the new reissue from San Martin. Now it's a reissue of a very classical watch from Seiko. Seiko themselves have done multiple reissues. And throughout my time reviewing watches on AliExpress, as you guys know, I've reviewed plenty of other 6 mass versions. Now, there's a lot of fans around this watch. Huge fan base, obviously, because it's so iconic. And, uh, you know, San Martin, as well as Heimdallah, were one of the first to do these watches back around three or four years ago. Uh, and they did a 41 millimeter version back then. Then we had 54 watch come in with a much more accurate version. It was very close to the original. Then you've got other micro brands like Armida. And then you also had Seastone who came with a much more modernized version. And finally, San Martin again with a reissue. Now, between all these six two mass homages, what is the real difference? What differentiates all of them? Is it the price? No. Is it the specifications? Definitely not, because a lot of them do come with very similar specifications. So it's down to one thing, and that is the dimensions. So I'll put up specs and dimensions to the left of the screen for you guys as we covered that in the unboxing. This new reissue is slightly smaller than their previous 41 millimeter. This is a 39 millimeter case with a 40 millimeter bezel, 13 mil thick. And those measurements aren't really the main ones. The main one is of course the log to log. So the older model, the 41 millimeter had a 50 millimeter log to log. This comes in at just two mil shorter at 48 millimeters. However, there is a slight problem. The end links, because you know, with these bracelets, it's so difficult to get them to kind of curve over. It's very difficult to get a female uh, end link on these bracelets. What you do get is a 50 millimeter log to log. Now, because of the second link again, how stiff that is in comparison, there's no fold over. You've actually got a total log to log of around 55 millimeters. So the one thing which is gonna differentiate this watch from the rest is in fact how it fits and in particular to my wrist size. So if you've got a wrist size of six and a half inches or 16.5 centimeters as I have, this is gonna be very crucial for you guys. Anyone with a wrist size of seven inches and above, it will be no problem. And I think, you know, this will fit most people. Now, there's another aspect of this watch which is different, and this is, uh, I'd say, San Martin's attempt to be more budget-friendly because these reissues, they've done a couple of models, and they're coming in a bit cheaper. Uh, so what do you get, you know, with the cheaper versions, and what don't you get with these cheaper versions? And when I say cheaper, it's not that cheap. It's still around £160 for this on the bracelet version. Uh, if you wanted to go for the FKM Tropical version, it's around £150. Well, let's start off with what you don't get. The only thing which I've seen is which you don't get with this new cheaper version is you don't get screw pins and you've got pin and collar, which is a pain, you know, on your hands and, and trying to get around to doing that. The other thing which they haven't given us is an on the fly adjustment on the clasp, which to be honest, I'm not too bothered about because, uh, you know, it's fine for them to put it on the high end version because these clasps are just as good. They come in with four micro adjustments. They're beautifully uh, finished as with all the other clasps from uh, San Martin. You've got a really nice satinized brushing. You've got some wide, beveled polished edges, the logo, twin pushers, and you know, again, I've got no problem with the way this clasp operates. So I'm happy with that. And, and if you were to go further than that, I'd say the packaging because you do get the old Pelican cases again. So these are the things which are missing, but is anything else affected? Definitely not. You still get San Martin's usual level of quality. You get a domed box style sapphire crystal with minimal AR coating in the sense that you don't get, you know, massive glare. Um, you've got a beautiful dial, a beautiful grey sunray, as well as a enamel matte blue dial and an enamel matte green dial. But I prefer the looks of this sunburst grey on a 6-2 mass. It's just beautiful. You also get high quality handset. You can see this is beveled on both sides. Um, the only thing which it is lacking, which I've seen on other versions of this watch, is the brushing down the center, which to me is a great touch. And the loom from San Martin on this watch is as awesome as it is on a lot of the watches. But one thing, because it's C3, it's bought back that nuclear glow that they had, something which BGW9 doesn't have. Uh, so I really do like super bright C3 as they did on the older watches. And you can see that loom is beaming through the camera and the bezel rotation on this watch is superb it's probably one of the best bezels i have felt and i gave you guys a sample in the unboxing so let's go again
To me, this bezel is the perfect balance between, you know, what I like. It's not overly stiff. I think the friction is spot on. It's not too heavy. It's not too light. Um, the clicks are superb. It's a great balance between, you know, that smooth glide and that precise glide. Um, very tactile feel. And again, you know, it's, there's no harshness in it. I think it is the perfect bezel. Um, and just listen to that. Very precise. No tinniness in it at all. Obviously, no back play. So, and I stand fully behind this bezel. So as you can see, they have still given us everything. Now, moving on to the case, you've got a really nice brushed finish, circular brushing, and it is just slightly better grained than the older versions. So the older ones were a bit coarse, um, you know, just to give you that rudimentary sort of finish. But this, you can see the circular brushing, the grain is a lot smoother. Uh, it's a lot finer, which gives you sort of a softer feel to the case. And like all 6 to mass style cases, you've got this you know, sharp edge on the side, uh, a polished side. And, but for me, these polished sides are an absolute um, nightmare because uh, they scratch ever so easily. I've scratched numerous ones with micro scratching from just using a cloth to clean them, but that's something you can't get away from. Now, one point I bet you're all wondering how sharp is the case? If you remember the 37 or 38 mil version, the bottom of the case was so sharp, I was able to perfectly peel some potatoes with it. Now, these edges are much better. I'm pleased to report that they're not as sharp as, as the, the old version. Um, you can feel it on your fingertips. It's nowhere near that level of sharpness, but it is still a defined edge, which is good. As I said, no sharpness, and it's a defined edge that they've been wanted to have. The bracelet as well, I think it's similar to the older versions. Um, it's a really nice link system. You've got center links, which are flat, beautifully finished. Uh, great brushing on there, very smooth, satinized, and then your sort of side links uh, on the three link bracelet are curved. So it's a nice contrast between the two. It is very similar to the Seiko SPB185 bracelet. So I've got an SPB185 in hand, and you can see that sort of link configuration is very similar. Seiko's is slightly superior because you've got the beveled edges on each side of those center links, which I believe San Martin also have the capacity to do this, but because it's there budget friendly version, you won't get that on this. Now it's also lacking uh, a decent taper. Uh, the taper only goes down to 18 millimeters from a 20 millimeter log width, which doesn't give you an enormous amount. Um, and I think something with a 6.2 mass with this size, perhaps it doesn't really need it. And I already mentioned the clasp. Now you don't have a signed case back, but you also have a signed crown. And I think St. Martin have just stepped away from signed case backs because I can't remember the last time they did one with any signage on there. And if you recall, you know, the first versions of these St. Martin 6.2 mass homages, you had, uh, I believe it was the shark on the case back, which is quite nice. It was done really well. So I guess the main thing we want to actually understand with this watch, or I want to understand and show, is how does it fit? I think that's the biggest question on everyone's mind. Uh, as I showed you for that 160, you still get pretty much all the specification minus a few elements. So let's go ahead, put it on wrist, and I'll talk you through how this 48 millimeter log to log watch fits. I am pleased to report that this watch fits beautifully. I was very unsure initially when I looked at the dimensions as I showed you guys, and also the log width, uh, I thought that would be problematic, but that was more problematic on the 41 millimeter version or the previous version with that solid 50 millimeter log to log. This being 48 millimeters, it's a much better fit. You can see the second link just sits on the wrist, but it is at that limit because of how stiff the second link is. So if I press down against the wrist, it doesn't go any further than that. So if you've got a six inch wrist, forget about this, go for the 38 millimeter versions instead or the 37 millimeter versions, um, because this will be a bit loose on your wrist and it won't, and it'll have an overhang. It won't be comfortable because that's the problem with that bigger case. It just wasn't comfortable because of the long log to log. And this is all subjective to the wrist size. As I said earlier at the start of the video, if your wrist is seven inches and above, you'll have no problems. But going back to this, uh, you know, I'm very impressed with this. I didn't think it would fit this good. Um, and I actually really like how it fits. You know, the slight curvature on the case does help um, being just slightly more compact. It sits centered on the wrist uh, and I can feel the entire watch case. There's no overhang, there's no wobble. It's really well balanced. And all these smaller points really add to the comfort you feel on wrist because if you're gonna wear this watch regularly, or on a daily basis, these, these are the things you need to know. It's all fine and well when you've got a large collection and you wear a watch maximum for a day or two, you don't really know how comfortable it is ultimately. Um, but yeah, this is really good on the steel bracelet and I'm an advocate of using rubber straps or tropical vintage straps on these style of watches, um, this and the Captain Willard homage in particular, but I could definitely wear this on the bracelet. But I will give you guys a wrist shot on a tropical strap and I'll give you a comparison against my 54 watch version. 
So I've stuck this 62 mass SN007GB on a rubber strap. I don't have any tropical straps to hand, but what I do have is a soft FKM rubber strap from Season, which is just as good. And it looks great on this rubber strap. So you've got an option there. If you don't like the bracelet, uh, you know, for £10 less, you can get the tropical strap that this comes with. But I do recommend get the bracelet because as you've seen, you know, on my particular wrist size, it does fit really well. And I'd say this is probably the best between both. So if you are if you don't like the 37mm or the smaller version from, let's say, 54 Watch or Seastern, um, and then you don't like the bigger versions that are out there, San Martin have given us the best, I think, somewhere in the middle. And I'm very impressed with how it fits. I just have a look at it when we compare it to the 54 Watch. This is in my own collection, and you can see just the size difference. And I think you'll agree when I say that the one from San Martin would be the perfect kind of somewhere in the middle between the two sizes that we've got there on AliExpress or around us. Um, and yeah, the 54 watch, it, you know, the way it is, that suits that size perfectly. And I do prefer the smaller one, but I am actually liking the way this San Martin fits. Now to summarize, there are a couple of issues which uh, I feel are lacking on this watch or they could definitely improve. Now I mentioned things we don't get because of the, the cheaper price, which was just a recap. We don't get screw pins and we don't get the on the fly adjustment with the clasp. But there is one one thing which is quite critical which San Martin have left off they, they haven't given us drilled lugs uh, and I noticed this especially when I went to change the strap um, and you also don't have quick release bars on the on the bracelet so while it's not a deal breaker you just think come on San Martin you could have done that there was no need to take drilled lugs away because I think as far as I can remember every single 62 mass uh, iteration has had drill lugs so that's something which they needed to put in my second slight issue with this watch is something particular about the 62 mass homage is the crown right and if you know about the 6217 original models you know there were a few issues uh, or a few iterations where and there was one in particular called the big crown version and this is the one that uh, 54 watch have got so while the diameter of the crown is big enough it's around seven mil actually which is a good size but you can just see it's a bit too narrow. I would have preferred this to be just a bit thicker, perhaps around four to four and a half millimeters, because you know it's you do need it to stick out because right now the bezel does kind of get in the way and it's just awkward, right? Um, when you want a tool watch like this, you don't want it to be awkward, you want it to be you know easy to access and manipulate. Uh, whereas this just makes it that much more difficult, but again, not a deal breaker. I've also mentioned something else which I mentioned previously is that text on the dial. It's a bit large. It gets in the way. Uh, I think it's disproportionate to the logo they have. And it's just that basic white text, which I really dislike now. Um, you know, it's like your basic text you could get. So they could have made that a bit smaller, made it a bit finer, perhaps just so it kind of blends into the dial a bit more rather than stand out so much on the dial and uh, yeah it's something i really dislike so not a lot of criticisms uh, the question is you know is it needed i'd definitely say it is now um because it's that midpoint between what we've got currently um it fits so much better than the the previous versions uh, i really like the finishing on it that bezel rotation is so precise so good uh, and of course it's got the usual san martin build quality behind it so that's my full opinion on the new San Martin SN007. And let me know your thoughts in the comments section. Is there anything you agree with or disagree with? I'd love to hear that. Um, and as always, thank you guys for watching. And I'll see you on the next video.